Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of Responsible AI in Action by the Responsible AI Institute. I am very excited for our guest today. We have Jeff Schaefer joining us. Jeff is head of Responsible AI and the chief AI ethics advisor at Booz Allen. Jeff, thanks so much for joining us on the show today. It's great to be here, Patrick. I'm so excited to have you here because even just in the short time that I've known you so far, I know that you've had connections with the Responsible AI Institute going back for a while now, but I've been very inspired by your leadership in the space. The way you talk about the importance of this work as well is just vital to the conversation and for the space to continue evolving and growing as an ecosystem. So I'm wondering if we could start there a little bit. What got you interested in pursuing this particular work? Yeah, so I've come to the field in sort of a roundabout way. I've been in it a little while now, about five years or so, but you know, I've had a really eclectic career. I started in the intelligence community doing counter intel and financial intelligence got into tech strategy, innovation management, sort of made a left-hand turn into finance, worked at a few institutions in, in New York, really thought that the future is moving really quickly. It's being driven by AI. There are these big societal level questions. I just felt like there was a role for me or there was impact that I could have that I wanted to have. And so you know, I came back to DC, came back to Booz Allen. It's my second time here, joined the AI team. And at first I thought, you know, the sort of the AI policy side of the field was where I wanted to focus. And it quickly became clear that all the ethical questions were the most interesting. And so very quickly, you know, in 2019 sort of pivoted into that side of the field. And as AI ethics itself evolved into responsible AI, and became sort of a broader set of concerns and practices, it just only became more interesting. When we think about responsible AI, we think about it in terms of a formula, we call it the REGS formula. So responsible AI equals ethics plus governance plus safety. And so as we've expanded that sort of aperture out into those other areas, the questions have only gotten more interesting. The problems are only more challenging, but the opportunity to actually use this work to advance the state of the field and advance where AI is going and how it can help us instead of harm us it just keeps me personally and then our team, you know, pretty highly motivated. Yeah, I think it's coming from this perspective of with how quickly AI is evolving and changing is that using responsible AI as the foundation is so critical. I imagine a lot of people watching this are responsible AI enthusiasts. I would love to get your take on why you believe responsible AI is such important work. You know, this technology is, throw all the cliches in there. It's so powerful. It's evolving so rapidly. It's impacting every role, every sector, every domain. And so with, you know, with great power comes great responsibility to round out the cliches. And so we, I'm an AI optimist. I'm so excited by the opportunities, particularly in the hard sciences, but to make our lives easier, more productive, more creative. I think it's going to be a hugely augmentative tool for us individually, for our organizations across society but it's not without its risks and challenges. And so I think responsible AI, if we think about it being this enabler of all of that promise as a way to protect that promise and to fully realize it, I think responsible AI historically has been looked at in this fairly myopic way where it's focused on risks and harms and ensuring that something doesn't go wrong versus how I think we should really be viewing it as a way to ensure all of the things go right. And, you know, I think you said earlier, like really setting the foundation for this powerful technology so that we can really figure out the maximal good it can do across all of all cross sections of society, every industry, every role versus 
you know, letting it develop in ways where we're not thinking critically about the right controls we need to wrap around it, how we mitigate some of the new risks it poses, et cetera. And then it just crashes out and, uh, you know, an entire sector may decide we can't use it. Um, or an organization that might otherwise benefit from it, you know, a small organization trying to compete with bigger organizations and all the productivity enhancements that that particularly generative AI offers them, you know, if something goes wrong and they decide we can't afford to use this as an organization, that's net bad. And so I think responsible AI allows us to sort of protect the opportunity across all of these, these industries and frankly, individuals that are trying to experiment with it for their own purposes, you know, personally and professionally. So I think it's exciting work because we are a key point of acceleration and protection that I think we're just not thought of, but in practice, we, we really are a critical enabler. Yeah. Yeah. I really love your perspective a lot. It's because we are practicing responsible AI that I believe we're going to be able to soar to new heights and really utilize the, the capabilities that this type of technology has. And that brings me to, to my next point, Jeff. Obviously, as technology, AI specifically, is rapidly evolving, we're seeing regulation around the world pop up. You know, the EU AI Act has been a big topic of conversation. But on the flip side of that, we also have some things popping up here in the United States. There's the executive order, the AI Bill of Rights as well. I would love to have your perspective on what's happening here and how it relates to what's happening in the rest of the world. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good question. So we were, we, Booz Allen, were really excited when the executive order came out. You know, we were a little surprised like everyone else at its breadth and all of the different things that were included in it. But we thought it was you know, fairly optimistic. And so we think of the executive order as the starting gun for our federal government to go do AI. And I think that's a historic, chain. The OMB implementation guidance that followed on the heels of the executive order, if the executive order was the starting gun, the OMB guidance is the race course. And so we were pleased to see the level of specificity um, in the OMB guidance to help make this real for our, you know, our, our federal clients. And so we're really, yeah, we're really excited by the action in the work that it has already kicked into gear. I mean, we have literally seen a sea change across our client base, you know, post executive order that just came out. Um, I think what we're going to see next domestically is the Congress start to legislate around more specific issues and risks. And I think that's the right posture. I think, yeah, there are specific things across industries, across use cases, particularly around deep fakes and and using AI to, to drive more malicious behavior like that, that I think can easily and should be easily outlawed or made illegal or sanctioned in some capacity. Doesn't mean that enforcement of that will necessarily be easy, but I think that's the right role and right focus for us to be moving towards domestically. I think, you know, if the EU AI Act, it's, it's, we're seeing maybe a similar, uh, Brussels effect that we saw post GDPR. I think that's a good thing. I think there's just a, this almost chorus of legislative and policy activity that's happening right now across partners and ally countries um, because everyone is you know, both concerned and sees the promise and wants to protect it, just like we were talking about earlier. So uh, I'll be curious to see what comes after you know, the ratification of the EU AI Act. That's both like an executive order and, you know, a piece of legislation in the United States. It's this almost this hybrid. So I'd be curious to see what they do next with it. But again, we view all of this as net good. You know, we're trying to wrap our arms around this. We're moving, the government is moving more quickly than it's ever moved in the past. I don't think it gets enough credit for that. From the release of chat GPT to the executive order, we saw a whole of government response at light speed. And that's amazing. We're going to learn a lot over the next year or two about what works in there, what does it work, what additional things that we need to be paying attention to and how, but that's as it should be. That's how this should work. We're not going to get it right the first time. 
around trying to regulate or control something as as powerful and as expansive as AI and as a technology that's evolving literally by by the minute. Of course, we're not going to get it right the first time, but I think it's exciting to see the quality and robustness of the effort so far. Yeah, that's a really good point, Jeff. The fact that people are at least coming together and having the conversations and actually putting motions into place is a good sign. And I agree with you. I am optimistic and I'm hopeful as well. Jeff, not thank you enough for taking the time to to join us on the show today. And I also just really appreciate your work, your leadership in the responsible AI space as well. Before we sign off, I'm wondering if you could just share with our listeners, where can they find out more information about you and all the great work that you're doing? Well, I appreciate that. First and foremost, Patrick, you know, we, to sing your all's praises for a second, we've had a vision for a while now about the companies that we view as critically important to our strategy and the future of our work. You guys were front and center. And we're so excited to be, to be a member and to chart our joint future together. So, so this is really exciting. Really appreciate your leadership here. And I think you guys are going to make our future more successful. So a little bit boring, you know, booseallen.com, you can find our homepage for the responsible AI team and the work that we're doing. There's a lot there. We have a lot of videos. A lot of explanation about some of the unique work that we're doing, particularly with our ethical ATO assessment, but we have some broader thought leadership there as well. Please follow me on LinkedIn too. We do some more real-time updates and thought leadership through, through LinkedIn. Well, for our listeners and viewers out there, I'll be sure to include the links in our show description. So be sure to check out all those various resources that Jeff has just shared. Jeff, thank you so much again. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Patrick.